Welcome in you savages. We are about to get into what I believe are the top 10 best kills in the entire Scream movie franchise, excluding the TV series because I haven't seen it yet and I don't really plan to. I'm not a huge fan of TV horror series, but I'm going to be ranking these kills based on the impact and the reaction that I got from it from the first time seeing these kills on screen and also the uniqueness of the kill and the brutality that comes with it. So without wasting any more time, coming in at the number 10 spot, we got Anthony Perkins from Scream 4. Before he gets killed, him and Haas are in the cop car and they're going back and forth arguing about who's going to get killed first. Haas goes and does his perimeter check around the house and then Perkins is in the cop car and he's pretending that he's dead and then when Haas comes back, he scares him. Haas gets killed and then Ghostface comes and just stabs Perkins right in the forehead with his knife and you can see Perkins eyes go up and look at the knife while the knife is still in his forehead and I'm wincing, I'm grabbing my forehead pretending that I got stabbed. He comes out of his cop car with blood covering his whole face and you can see Ghostface in the background just staring at him as he walks away and then Perkins is like slowly dropping to his knees and his last line before he dies, he's like, fuck Bruce Willis. One of the funniest lines in the whole entire Scream franchise, this kill definitely deserves to be on this list at number 10. At the number 9 spot we got Laura Crane from Scream 6. The girl in the opening scene played by Samara Weaving. Now you can say she was pretty stupid for how she got herself into this mess and how she got herself killed. She was supposed to meet some guy at this restaurant. He actually gets her to come out of the restaurant to come into an alleyway where he's waiting for her. He comes out, shoves a knife right into her stomach and she lets out this horrifying scream that you could just hear throughout the whole theater. I remember when I first saw it, I was like, damn, this girl can scream. Now what made me want to put this kill in the top 10 is because how the kill ended. Usually in the beginning of the scene when we see Ghostface killing the first victim in the movie, it goes into the uh, scream title. But in Scream 6, we stay focused on Ghostface. We don't go into the scream title yet. And then we see Ghostface reveal himself. This is the first time in the whole franchise that we see him do that in the beginning of the movie. And in the movie, like when I first saw this, I was like, damn, we're going to see Ghostface already. We're going to know who he is. But if you watch the movie, you know that doesn't happen. He gets killed by the actual person who's going to be Ghostface in the entire film. Pretty cool. It deserves to be on this list at the number nine spot. <laughs> Coming in at number 8, we got Tatum Riley from Scream 1. Now, this was such a funny, hilarious kill. Tatum's in the garage trying to get beer for everybody back in the house. Ghostface is right at the door, blocking her way from getting back inside. She goes up, confronts him, calls him Casper the Friendly Ghost, and it's not until that he slices her arm with a knife. She freaks out, drops the beer, runs to the garage. She drops to the ground and she actually thinks that she's going to get out of the little doggy doorway that's connected to the garage. Ghostface is looking at her. She's halfway through the door. He clicks on the garage button. It slowly starts to lift up and she's wiggling, but she's stuck. She's trying to get out, but then her head gets smashed as soon as it reaches the top and her body's just left there just hanging. One of the most creative kills out of the whole entire franchise. <laughs> All right, at the number seven spot, we got Wes Hicks from Scream 5. And man, when I tell you that if there's a kill that you felt when you were watching it, this is the kill that you felt. Wes Hicks, damn, he gets the knife stuck inside of his neck and you can see it coming out the other side. It was so crazy the first time I saw it, but we got Wes Hicks walking around his house after he's done taking a shower and he's waiting for his mom to get back with uh, some sushi. And you, you see him, he's closing the refrigerator door, he's opening up the pantry door. And every single time he closes or opens up the door, you think Ghostface is right behind it. But then it's not until he goes to the front door to make sure it's locked, is when he turns around and Ghostface meets him right there, gets him with the knife, they have a little back and forth trying to fight the knife off from each other. And then you see the knife going inside of his neck, coming out the backside, and he's still fighting Ghostface. So the knife is going in and out of his neck playing peekaboo and you can see the tip coming out of the backside. One of the most gut-wrenching kills that I've seen. It's so hard to look at. And then he slowly drops to the ground and dies. It deserves to be at number seven, Wes Hicks. I'm so sorry, man. That was such a hard kill to watch. But I give props to Wes Hicks 
for trying to fight off Ghostface, man. You tried, you tried, you did your best. All right, at number six, we got Olivia Morris from Scream 4. I believe this was the first time we ever saw Ghostface commit such a brutal kill and damn, did Olivia Morris get the knife? Poor, poor Olivia Morris. All she was trying to do was change her clothes. She was in her bedroom by herself, on the phone with her friends that were across the way in the other house talking to her. And damn, Ghostface just comes out of her closet, starts gutting her. So many knife stabs, like she's dead dead. And not only that, he takes her body and smacks her through the window, and now she's halfway hanging out the window, dead, gutted. Her friends from the other house are looking at her. They're still on the phone. I don't know what they're doing. I don't know why they're not calling the cops or even rushing to her help, but she was screaming the whole time getting stabbed. Such an insane, brutal kill. You deserve this spot at number six, Olivia. You just got gutted like an animal. I'm so sorry. And now we're moving on to the next one. <laughs> At number five, we got Anika from Scream 6. And talk about getting gutted. This one's kind of similar to Olivia Morris' death in Scream 4. But when Ghostface sticks his knife in her, he does this sawing motion, going upwards, gutting her. And then she's just sitting down there, trying to keep her guts in her stomach while everybody is trying to escape. And then they call her over to go across the window, crawling over the ladder when Ghostface grabs it and starts shaking it. And then he gets her off of it she falls down all those floors she smacks her head so hard up against the dumpster container and then smacks on the ground it's a fucking double whammy she's knocked out she's dead lifeless on the ground such a crazy unique brutal kill you won't forget it it's one of the best from scream six All right, at the number four spot, we got Stu Mocker from Scream 1. Now the sequences leading up to Stu Mocker's kill is so funny. You got him and Billy going back and forth with the knife, trying to stab each other, giving each other stab wounds. And then you got Sydney calling them a little bit later. Billy tosses the phone at Stu, it hits him in the back of the head. And Stu's like, you hit me with the phone, you dick. And then later on, you see Stu rushing Sydney. Sydney knocks him to the ground. And then she takes the TV, smashes it on top of his head. He gets electrocuted, but us fans are still thinking that he still might be alive. And maybe he might come back to Scream 7 or Scream 8 or any other Scream that comes out in the future. Stu Marker lives. We believe it. Let's go to the next one. Uh, I always had a thing for you, Sid. Oh, oh, oh. In your dreams. At number three, we got Dewey's kill in Scream 5. This was unexpected. I was not expecting him to die ever. You man, you have like the core three. You have Sydney, Gale, and Dewey. And you expect him to survive every single movie that comes out. But in Scream 5, Dewey meets his doom. He was one of my favorite characters out of the whole franchise. In Scream 5, he goes to the hospital to rescue Tara from being attacked. They're all about to go into the elevator to get out of the hospital, but Dewey stays back to try and fight off Ghostface. He goes, confronts him with a revolver, but then Ghostface comes, stabs him in the front and in the back, lifts him up, guts him, throws him back on the ground and he's dead laying there. Gail and Sydney come to the hospital. They're heartbroken. I was too. I was like, no, I can't believe Dewey finally died was very unexpected. I thought that Gale would die first before Dewey, but that's what we got in Scream 5. Yes, today. At the number two spot, we got Maureen Evans from Scream 2. Another opening scene. This one was pretty crazy because it takes place in a theater. Out of all places, they're going to watch a stab movie her and her boyfriend, they're sitting in the stands, everybody's dressed up with the ghost face mask. He goes to the bathroom, he comes back with the ghost face mask, sits right next to her, she doesn't know this is ghost face, she still thinks this is her boyfriend. He leans over, stabs her a couple times in the stomach, she gets up in shock, and she's screaming in front of the whole theater, and everybody's thinking that she's playing around, 
doing some sort of skit. They're not believing her that she's actually injured or getting stabbed. And Ghostface even goes up there and stabs her a few times in front of everybody. He leaves and she lets out this horrifying yell and drops to the ground dead in front of everybody. And they finally figure out that it was true and it was happening. And if this ever happened to me and nobody freaking helped me and I was screaming for help, oh, screw all you guys. Screw all you guys in your movie and your ghost face mask and your fake knives. You guys are a part of the problem. And you guys need to help out a victim who's crying for help in front of you next time. Damn. Rest in peace, Maureen Evans. Tough way to go, but such a unique kill, such a unique setting. The whole scene was crazy. I couldn't believe it. And it feels like one of my nightmares that I actually had in the past. So sorry, Maureen. I would have helped you if I was there, but rest in peace. Taking the number one spot out of all the kills in the whole entire Scream franchise, you know it had to go to Casey Becker from Scream 1. This whole opening scene plays out like something that would actually happen in real life. She gets a phone call from a stranger that tries to befriend her and talk nice and chit chat and she's kind of entertaining it, you know? But shit gets real when she finds out that he has her boyfriend tied up in the back and now she has to answer a series of questions in order to keep both of them alive and she ends up messing up he dies and then she gets put on this chase around the house with Ghostface. she starts to run to the front of the house where she sees her parents she tries to scream out for them but she can't because Ghostface had crushed her vocal cords when he was choking the shit out of her and the parents go inside the house they see that the popcorn on the stove was burning up the fire alarm is going off they go back outside and then the mom just starts screaming bloody murder and then we see the zoom in. We see the crazy zoom in into Casey Becker and she's hung from a tree by the neck. It's one of the most horrifying scenes that you will ever see throughout the whole entire Scream franchise. I think that this is the best kill throughout all these movies. It's definitely one that you will never forget. And there you guys have it, my list of what I think the top 10 best kills are in the entire Scream franchise. If you guys did enjoy the video, let me know by leaving a like and let me know in the comments what are some of your favorite kills in all of these Scream movies. If you're new here, don't forget to sub for more future content and I hope to catch you on the next one.